65. Draw the orbital picture of acetylene. So first, let's start with the Lewis structure of acetylene. Now, what is the hybridization at this carbon? This carbon has two groups attached to it. So it's going to be S1P1 hybridized. 1 plus 1 is 2. Hydrogen is simply an S orbital. It's not really a hybrid orbital. It's just pure S. When you have a hybrid, you have a mixture of two different things. Now keep in mind, carbon has one s orbital in, the, in its second energy level, that is, and three p orbitals. So to make this sp hybrid orbital, the carbon has to take one s and one of its three p orbitals and just mix them together to form this hybrid. So how many empty p orbitals does carbon have left over in order to make an sp hybrid orbital? This carbon has two empty p orbitals. So keep this in mind. If you have an sp3 hybrid carbon, that means that there's zero p orbitals. If you have an sp2 hybrid carbon, you have one empty p orbital. If you have an sp hybrid carbon, you have two empty p orbitals. So that's how you can determine the number of empty p orbitals a carbon has. If the carbon is sp3 hybridized, it used up all of its p orbitals, so it doesn't have any empty p orbitals. If it's sp, it used up one out of its three p orbitals, so it has two left over. Now let's draw a picture, the orbital picture of acetylene. So here we have the carbon. Here we have our sp hybrid orbital. And here is hydrogen. So what is the orbital overlap in the CH bond here? Here we see an S orbital overlapping with an SP orbital. So that is the overlap that's found in this bond. The SP is overlapping with the S orbital. Now what about the sigma bond that's found in the triple bond? What type of orbital I mean what type of orbital overlap do we have there? So this orbital is an sp orbital and this one is an sp orbital. Both of these carbon atoms are sp hybridized. So we have an overlap of two sp orbitals. So we would say it's sp sp. That's the orbital overlap for the sigma bond in that triple bond. So just to recap, here we have two sp orbitals overlapping, and here we have an sp and an s orbital overlapping. Now where are the empty p orbitals? So we have an empty p orbital above and below the carbon atom. So let's say if this is the x-axis, the blue p orbital would be in the y-axis. The other p orbital is going to be in the z-axis. So here is the other empty p orbital. It's like on the side. So in this triple bond, there's three bonds. Think of the first bond as the sigma bond that's indicated in white. That's the overlap of two sp orbitals, two hybrid sp orbitals. The second bond is the first pi bond. So that's going in the y direction. So that's the overlap of two empty p orbitals on the adjacent carbons. So that's the first pi bond. The second pi bond in red, there's an overlap along 
the z axis. It's parallel to the x axis, but the orbitals, they extend along the z axis. For the blue orbitals, they extend along the y axis, but the overlap is parallel to the x axis. So that is the orbital picture of acetylene. So just to recap, here we have an overlap of an S and a hybrid SP orbital. The same is true here. Here we have an overlap of two SP hybrid orbitals. So all of these are sigma bonds. And for the pi bond, it's just empty p orbitals next to each other. And they exist above and below the sigma bond. Now, I want to take a moment to let you know that the video that you're currently watching only represents one test question out of the 90 questions that are found in my Organic Chemistry 1 Exam 1 video. So for those of you who want access to the full video, check out the links in the description section below this video. Now, let's get back to the problem.